Next speaker is uh, Mr. Efficiency, Dr. Kudzi, the man to my right here. Uh, he is chairman. Six feet uh, away. Yeah, six, six feet, feet away. away specifically. He's chairman of Good Samaritan Hospital, chairman of surgery. Uh, interestingly, the hospital used to be Tom Brady's hospital. Ah, <laughs> Patriots fan, sorry. So uh, he's going to talk about efficiency, and that's another way to become cost effective and becoming efficient. So, Yusuf, uh, lead us off on efficiency, please. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Virtual. I'll be talking on maximizing efficiency in annual hernia repair. This is Yusuf Kutsi from Boston. First, I'd like to thank the audience, faculty, moderators, and industry. I have to say, this is going to be the first time I'll be giving a talk to an audience of more than 9,000 people in one room. Pretty exciting time. Briefly, I'll be talking on the value of robotics in inguinal hernia, transition from lab TEP to robotic tab, personal data, and literature overview on robotic inguinal, what it takes to transform the culture, focusing on efficiency and implementing new technology. Every journey starts with hope and high expectations. That was a photo of my first marathon. Similar to surgeon's experience, by hope that he or she can do anything laparoscopically. Well, halfway through that journey or that marathon, start thinking about it. Can I truly do everything laparoscopically? Well, how about these tough cases, or you can call them the complex inguinal hernia? I'm pretty sure that many could consider robotics for these complex cases, where they continue to do their cases laparoscopically, and they choose to use robotics for challenging or complex inguinal hernia, such as in this case, where you have bilateral scleral hernia extending to the mid thigh, with most of the colon and the small intestine stuck up there. With the hope, that if you do this robotically, you'll be able to do this in a minimal invasive fashion with the expectation that it will be quick, less than an hour, patient will do great, you'll go home, high five, and everyone is very happy, very happy. Well, in reality, it's not the case. These cases are very challenging, very difficult and time consuming, but doable. At first, I went on to do even more cases and was very selective and ended up doing only the difficult cases. As you can see here, incarcerated, a bit of a challenge, but we went on and it was doable or one side or two side. We did see value in these difficult cases. Others such as incarcerated with fair amount of momentum, for me would have been a challenge from a lab TEP. So I chose robotic tab approach. pre dissection, exposure, and then complete reduction of the momentum. Well, what was my first impression? That there was value in these challenging cases, but when it came to time, I did not finish on time. These cases took quite a long time. Efficiency, Team was confused if my case is going to be booked laparoscopic or robotic and what kind of algorithm I use in our busy practice. This is my first marathon. Excited to finish, but it was almost four hours and 23 minutes. To look at things from a different perspective, we decided to stop doing laparoscopic inguinal and do all our cases robotically for inguinal in order to improve efficiency, techniques, and explore if there's true value in these cases. So we went on to do the simple, straightforward, one side, two side, elective, semi-elective, or emergent cases. During business hours, even evenings, or on call. It was reproducible, 
we're able to execute those cases. Significant learning for the team, setup, preparation, and turnover. Everything made sense, and we made very good progress throughout that journey. We even, we even went on to do concomitant procedures. As we do majority of our cases in middle basic fashion, this is a TEP incisional hernia. At the same time, patient has bilateral direct inward hernias. As you can see here, we placed two extra large PD max, close the anterior defects here from the incisional hernia and place another 15 by 15 soft mesh. So in total, three pieces of mesh from the TEP approach. Great approach for this hernia. So what kind of impression I had now halfway, this true value across the spectrum, time, we're getting better as we do in more and more cases. And even the efficiency aspect, we're getting more, more reproducible and team and booking their what to do in this simple, moderate, challenging cases. But despite all this, as you can see in this photo, that was my second marathon. I was prepared, ready to go, but I went on, it was a New York marathon, halfway started to rain, it got soaked, cold, and could not finish on time. So although you prepared, there's a lot of circumstances that might happen to you along the way. We published our initial case series. We talked about our transition from lab TEP to robotic tap. As kind of expected, we were able to execute and do more complex cases from the robotic platform in comparison to the laparoscopic approach. It was uh, only 157 in comparison to 118 from a complication very similar, although we had more conversion in laparoscopy. Time was very similar as well, operative time. And I think it was a really unique paper because it truly compared first ever laparoscopic to the first ever robotic approach when it came to all inguinal hernias. So we went on to do more and more inguinal hernias and then everything else in our practice. As of 2020, I've done over 2,600 robotic cases. About one quarter of those cases, inguinal hernias. Over 600 robotic inguinal hernia with only 3% as an emergency. And majority of those done as a same day surgery, 93%. As you can see here, the skin to skin and consult time, the skin to skin about an hour plus minus 30 minutes and consult time is 48 minutes plus minus 28 minutes. Majority of cases are male, 91%. And ASA2 as in 83% of those cases. Elective in 96%. And we able to do 11.5 concomitant, mostly when dealing with abdominal wall hernias. Majority of those cases were primary hernias, 88.5, bilateral in 31% and indirect in 63.8%. Moving on to what's been published in literature, I chose three papers. This is from Italy, talking about primary inward hernia systematic review. Reviewed 16 studies, over 51,000 patients, comparing open, TAPP, TEP, and robotic TAP. Not surprisingly, the conclusion that the choice of the most suitable surgical approach should be based on the surgeon experience and obviously the patient. Second study coming from the American Hernia Society Quality Collaborative where they reviewed over 4,600 patients. Similar idea, reviewing techniques, approaches, and not surprisingly as well, all of them had pretty much good outcomes, low rate complication within the first month. The last paper, which I really like, talks about 
pain as well, which is a hot topic in the last year and the next couple of years, I would assume, reviewing robotics and open and laparoscopy, where they found out in robotics, the outcomes were improved in comparison to the open and laparoscopy. And what's interesting as well, they found out a higher rate of opiate use in the open group. As we want to do on more and more robotic and more hernia cases, as you can see here, we streamlined our port placement and docking to avoid collisions and maximize efficiency. Went into the details of flap creations, anatomical structures, landmarks, my pitinous orifice, proper overlap, precise measurement and documentation, some tips and tricks dealing with particular hernias, nerve identifications, nerve identifications, lipomas, and precise closure of the flaps. We share these tips and tricks in the Atlas of Robotic Surgery. Moving on to uh, the efficiency and, and the culture transformation. Everyone has a different definition of what is the true meaning of efficiency. It could be the number of cases could be done in one day, or it could be how many minutes is the average turnover, or what's their block time, and what percentage of use of their block time. I came across this uh, photograph by Andreas Gursky a couple years ago, and I think it's a role model for team collaboration, safety, and efficiency. Nothing new, even in history, has been talked about a long time ago. That's where the role of leadership, where you need to identify a particular change, creating a precise and clear vision, and executing those changes in small steps, those leaders need to be a role model and they have to know their followers and how to deal with the problems that are going to be arise along the way. You cannot transform any culture without knowing the behaviors that could drive team success. I chose four, which I came across while reading one of the very good books uh, from Teaming at Harvard Business School, talking about speaking up, collaboration, experimentation, and reflection. In this photograph, we can see exactly what it means. This tray was developed by the nurse and the scrub tech, not by the surgeon, about experimentation, reflection, and discussions in the environment with psychological safety. As you can see in this photo, that the patient is about to be extubated and the robot is undraped, the room is ready to be cleaned. That is the true meaning of efficiency. Everyone is doing a particular task at a particular time and everyone is moving. I'm gonna leave you in a second with Peter and Susan, the team lead at our, at our own institution and they've done over 3,000 robotic cases and had a great record. Here you go. But like the turnover, like particularly the turnover, for example, like, you know, maybe you guys go with us to the minute that the surgeon kind of undock the robot to the minute that the surgeon comes back to the room to do the second case. Just, you know, walk us through your, your thought process it doesn't have to be in the details, but what's the kind of science or your ideas behind being such an efficient and, uh, and successful in, in replicating this every single week? Well, I think when we undock the robot, Peter's already undressing the robot. So that's one less thing that has to be done by myself or an, another team member. Um, once we get the robot undocked and you're starting to close, I'm starting to break down my back table and that's one less thing that has to, you don't have to wait until the very end of the surgery to break everything down. We're already looking to the next case as the robot's being broken down and as you're sewing up, you know, the portholes. 
So basically, by the time that the patient is ready to leave... The room is clean. Okay. The room is absolutely clean. It only has to be um, mopped and the equipment wiped down, and then we're ready to roll in the next um, case. But such as a team, we've also, besides who we have in the room, we also have housekeeping involved, mm -hmm. which is important because they know we're fast, we're efficient, we want to get things done for our patients, and they know this, so... It, they're a part of the team. Once right. again, they're a part of the team. Mm -hmm. No one is more important than anyone else in, as a part of the team. And you right. have to make people realize that. Even oh. if they're cleaning rooms, they're a part of your team and you pull them in and you make them feel welcome. Going on to part of the culture transformation and implementing new technology, having the robot as any other technology available every single minute, 24 seven. In order to get this across, surgeon should lead a large, be able to troubleshoot at any time and help everyone else. I'm gonna share with you an example. In the past, I had a hard time doing these cases after hours. You can see the old uh, uh, robot model. So when it came after hours doing these emergency cases, the, the, the scrub tech was inexperienced. So in order to get this moving, I would scrub in and, and be the, the scrub assistant help her basically drape and, and set up the robotic uh, procedure. Well, we had a great run and she would high five me or she'd smile. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she enjoyed it that after three, months, after three months, she retired. Moving on to, to science and what's being published about implementing new technology. These are the kind of factors being talked about to successful outcomes. Well, everyone would imagine that hospital innovation history would be an important factor, resources, management support, and organizational status for the project leader. There was this nice example at, uh, at, the, at the book, Teaming, talking about how the 16 hospital thought about implementing minimal invasive cardiac surgery. I think it's a very nice example. We can learn from it when it comes to robotics as well. You can see that uh, this is a sample of four hospitals that actually didn't really matter if there was a senior or junior surgeon for these programs to be successful. What really mattered is actually is the, the, the purpose and, and the, the way that the surgeon interacted with the team. And that's the kind of take home message that the surgeon should not be a dictator. The surgeon should be an independent uh, team leader and should be powering his or her team in order to get things across. They should frame their role in order to influence everyone else with their particular or clear purpose and has to be aspirational rather than defensive. At the end, I truly believe that robotics has a clear value in inguinal hernia across the whole spectrum. In order to Transform the culture at your institution. You need to know the barriers to teaming, the behaviors that drive team success, and everything has to be done with a clear purpose. That was my last marathon. I ran for a cause. I worked with everyone as part of a team. I was ready and well prepared. Thank you and have a good day. So great talk, Yusuf. Uh, what was your time on that last marathon, by the way? <laughs> still not good. I no, good. Better. Yeah, no, still right. in the four hours. You can still work on it. Work yeah, on that efficiency. On so, so I watched your presentation. Really enjoyed it. Um, there's, there's some lot of takeaways you can take from that about becoming efficient, right? You can uh, streamline that back table. That's less instruments. It's a quicker count. Um, work on that turnover process, especially. Mm -hmm. You can really get that organized, like the pit stop with your. Uh, that is his race car, by the way. He actually owns that. Um, <laughs> and like their race car, like a pit stop, and it's an efficient team that happens quickly. And then I think you can improve your efficiency by uh, getting more touches on the robot, right? So when it comes to inguinal hernia, which is what this is about, I mean, do you think you should just selectively do difficult scrotal hernias on the robot and, and do your, you know, your quote-unquote straightforward inguinal hernias uh, not on the robot? What are, your, what are your thoughts? And do you think that helps? The more touches you get, the more efficient you become. Definitely. Um, obviously, we did it wrong at first. We only did the
tough cases. I've showed you the first couple of videos. My first, literally the first three inguinal hernias were the toughest cases ever. And I just, after that I stopped. I said, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you cannot do these cases for hours. It was very challenging for everyone, including myself and the team. So when we started doing all these cases robotically as all in, then we learned the tips and tricks, you know, the, the docking, the arm positioning, the, we were able to troubleshoot. That's what matters. I mean, for us as a surgeon, you can actually do a good job technically, but there's a team effort. And that comes in the efficiency. And at the end of the day, you want to get the cases done and everyone should be seeing value. And that value is on top of that clinical value should be from an institutional perspective. You know, how long does the case takes and, and uh, how, what's the perception? Of, of, of your uh, of your work right mm -hmm. what's the average turnover time question from the from the cap so I, I you know in the best days if someone is gonna come over and watch us kind of uh, operate we've run it down to less than uh, 10 minutes so wheels out to wheels in was a single digit but I think if you want to take the whole year you're probably gonna go in the 15 minutes obviously it's very different when you do a colectomy and case yeah. takes a couple hours versus you doing a hernia or go about it, and it was really very yeah. quick. The more consistent the case, the shorter the turnover, right? Mm -hmm. TJ, average turnover time, do you know, in your robot room? It depends on our staff. Uh, it cycles in and cycles out. At our best, we were probably cycling in in 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and then when it's bad, it's 45 minutes when it's new staff right. and people leave. It's, it's always cycling because of staff coming and going. Yeah, we're, we're actually quicker uh, turnover times in our robot room than the rest of our OR. And it has uh, everything to do with staff, just uh, as you mentioned, Yusuf. It, it is. It's, it's, I don't want to focus exactly on the number of minutes. I mean, some people might want to say like, you know, 15 versus 12 or 20 or 25. Uh, as long as you're in a pretty good range, you must be kind of comfortable or happy. What really matters more is the team concept or the effort. You know, sometimes you might be very efficient and you're executing your procedure and you're done, but the anesthesia wasn't kind of aware of how long to take the procedure. Then it can take another 10, 15 minutes to extubate the patient. Or you open the wrong scope and you don't have enough scopes. If you have, you know, six or seven cases booked on that day and then you have to really have that kind of back line. We have something called a red kind of red line or hot line where everything we, we finish, we, set, we ship it downstairs so we get ready and prepared for the next case. Obviously, we have the 24-7 concept as well. So we want to be prepared all the time to have uh, available instrumentations. Well, you, you brought up team building. So what are the sort of things you do to build your team? We, we do happy hours and things like that to, to kind of... <laughs> we castrate goats uh, in Oklahoma. So, I'm joking, uh, not really. You know, unfortunately, every time we try to do something, it gets canceled. We want to go to Miami, so the team was really excited. And everyone bought tickets and hotels, and we're going to go to Miami and have fun, but that didn't work out. Even last time we went to California, it didn't work out. But at least we would try to get together. But I think what really matters the most for team building is psychological safety. I think the idea is not trying to be best friends with your, uh, with your, uh, with your staff, but I think creating that environment that everyone would love to work and troubleshoot together, as I said, experiment work and kind of find a solution for these problems. And okay. Get input from people, right? Techs, nurses, and Everybody. value their opinion, right? Because yeah. they're seeing it from a whole different perspective. Yes. Everybody Anesthesia has Anesthesia as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone. Even as, as, uh, as Peter mentioned in the kind of short video, you know, no one is more important than anyone else in the team. Everyone should be equally important in order to get this, this moving forward. Okay, I got a legit question. Who edits all those videos, dude? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So well, we're, we're trying to convince Yusuf to do a PowerPoint on just video editing since he can edit about 12 videos every day out of the 24 <laughs> cases he does a day. But talk uh, a little bit about that. No, I, I think I chose uh, the iMovie. iMovie is pretty, pretty simple and easy. And over the course of the years, it became much, much easier. And obviously, if you don't want to make it look great, uh, you just have a you know, short and quick edits and get the job done. We, I learned so much from watching videos. I mean, I, I, can lame, I can name hundreds of folks I've learned you know, tips and tricks. So I think it's really important for us, especially on this Facebook groups, to share uh, tips and techniques and, and uh, how we do this procedure to learn or see our complications. So if you don't really have the time, we, really, we need to create that time. We are in a different era, different generation, different kind of uh, expectations. We need to take advantage of this multimedia, record these videos and share them. You will learn enormously. You will yeah. change your career by this video. Absolutely. So career changing uh, for me was incorporating residents into my private practice, mostly an incredibly joyous experience, uh, occasionally something different than that. Uh, and I know you had that same transition to, to beginning the fellowship. Um, talk a little bit about how you, what that was like for you, going from an incredibly efficient surgeon to now teaching someone how to do a case and, and thinking about efficiency like every half second like I know you do. Uh, it was probably one of my best uh, decisions I've done in my career to really start doing a fellowship. I've always loved education 
but I, I couldn't do it at first with the robotics. It had a steep learning curve, especially being a, a younger guy, just a, graduating and learning this robotics. But you know, we have to take a step back. Um, and as kind of Connor mentioned in his presentation, it, it's amazing if you can teach someone. So definitely going to influence the, the the efficiency and how long will it take you to to finish your day. But that's something you can work step by step, and uh, you have to really you know, for example, when you start with the fellowship. Yes, it's going to take longer, but you know that could be really paid back in a different ways. So if you're doing uh, a robotic inguinal hernia, you cannot, for example, have the fellow do from A to Z. As, at first, I actually start by I dock the robot, I put the ports, I do everything for the fellow, and the fellow just sit down and start the case. So I'll do all the scar work so the fellow can actually get started, and we can alternate. And, and every kind of quarter, things change so they can actually take more ownership on, on these procedures. But obviously, it will take a hit, so it, it, it has to be coming from a passion. Right. Excellent. I did also notice your slides, you know, you kind of went from the formula racing car theme to the marathon, which I, pro I think is probably slower. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, uh, just going to say that, but, but no, amazing uh, that you can do marathons. I don't have it in me. No. Maybe when I'm 60. <clears throat> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Where are we at? You guys, oh, you know, we did forget to mention some house breaking, house uh, ground rules, you know, like the uh, bathrooms are wherever your bathrooms are. Uh, but you know, obviously feel free to take bio breaks. You can pause the video, I'm pretty sure. And the, and the content is gonna stay on the site. Uh, so there's been a lot of threads, a lot of questions about that. Um, we plan to keep this up indefinitely uh, so that the impact can be as large as possible. Yeah, I, literally, like I will help out. Uh, so if I don't have visitors, because I'm down doing didactic in between cases, if I don't have visitors, I will help turn over the room. I will break scrub and my, my PA will close. And then I'll go and I'll, I'll take the drapes off the robot. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll start wiping down some tables. And you know, maybe I'll do that like once a month or so, but people see that I'm engaged uh, and care about what's going on. And it's not that I want to be you know, doing that necessarily, but I think you know, as a surgeon in the room, we're, we're team leaders. That doesn't mean I'm saying everyone should help wipe down, but I think when you set that example and the people come in that mop the floor, they see, they, first, they start, took videos of me when I first started to do right. it. Yeah, they're like, this is unbelievable. we've never Katie seen this before. Or what? <laughs> and, then, and you care about what we do, and I think yeah. that's really important. I think it's, a, it's great. It's very important to actually include your, the team because everyone is, in, is interested, especially in the outcomes. When everyone sees that your outcomes are very good, everyone kind of like buys in, in, this, in this project. You know, we have anesthesia being kind of being proactive and help us sometimes clean the room. I mean, sometimes I actually had, we had the chief of anesthesia kind of with a smile and helping cleaning the room with us. And with a, you know, with, with kind of, again, with a smile. That's video worthy. Yeah, yeah. that is I'm video I'm sorry, worthy. yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like, again, leading a chart, you know, in making a difference at your institution. Everyone is happy. At the end of the day, we're providing the best kind of uh, operation for our patients. We've got a, a question from the thread. Prakash Gata says, Question to all of us, uh, how has robotics changed your referral pattern? Has it allowed you to create the practice that you always wanted? It's a tough question and a great question at the same time. I mean, every single year we actually evolve as, as uh, a surgeon. I think I did watch Igor say even his last couple of years he changed from, I think he was doing kind of different uh, uh, general surgery. Now he's focused on one particular uh, uh, topic, uh, abdominal reconstruction. Same thing for us. So I, uh, what happens as you become good, especially with these kind of challenging cases, these PCPs end up referring you more and more of those cases because I would say more of these complex cases, they're always looking for someone where they actually can send these catastrophes to. So definitely what has changed for me over the last, I would say, three to four years, I had almost then more than two to 300% increase in this complex eyeball reconstruction because no one wants to take care of them. And obviously not no one to take care of them. They know they can do a decent job, so they try this, this pathway. Yeah. Nice. All right. Great.